Any ship in World of Warships can gain additional abilities or have some of their characteristics temporarily improved. In today's episode of How It Works, we're going to talk about how consumables achieve that. In World of Warships, all consumables operate for a limited amount of time and need to cool down before their next use. You can accelerate the cooldown time of consumables with the Jack of All Trades Commander skill and November Foxtrot signal. Additionally, almost all consumables have a limited number of uses, but this number can be increased with the Superintendent skill. The only consumable with an unlimited number of charges is Damage Control Party. Let's start with that one. Damage Control Party instantly repairs damaged modules, extinguishes fire, removes instances of flooding and, most importantly, prevents new instances of fire and flooding from appearing on your ship while the consumable is active. Its duration differs according to the nation and type of the ship. After each use of the Damage Control Party consumable, some time is required for it to recharge. For this reason, you need to assess the exact situation before activating it. If your ship is coming under heavy bombardment from HE shells, it's important not to waste the consumable on a single instance of fire or flooding, unless the amount of your ship's remaining HP is critical, of course. When bombers are carrying HE bombs in your direction, and enemy torpedoes are approaching your side, you'd better wait a bit before using Damage Control Party to fix the damage from all of these problems at once. You can reduce the cooldown time with the High Alert Commander skill and increase the effect time of the consumable with the Special Damage Control Party Modification 1 upgrade. Finally, to help you preserve Damage Control Party for really extreme situations, any commanders that you employ on destroyers should possess the Last Stand skill. This will keep your damaged engines and rudders operational. The majority of Soviet battleships are equipped with Fast Damage Control Team. It works in the same way as Damage Control Party, but requires less time to recharge and has a limited number of uses. If Damage Control Party is in cooldown and your ships are suffering from several instances of fire and flooding, you can use Repair Party to restore part of your ship's lost HP. You can learn more about that particular consumable in How It Works Repair Party. If you want to use Repair Party to its full effect, don't activate it after taking just a little damage. However, do activate the consumable right away if two or three enemy ships start firing at you simultaneously, as during the time the consumable is active, you'll almost certainly lose enough HP for it to be 100% effective. If your ship has plenty of Repair Party charges, don't be too cautious about using them, else you might not have a chance to use them at all. It's worth adding that the India Delta signal significantly increases this consumable's efficiency. If some parts of your ship, such as the forward end or hull, have been destroyed, then after using Repair Party, these parts will again have some HP, and any hits to these parts will again deal not 10%, but one-sixth of the shell's damage. Keep in mind that repairs reduce the efficiency of the Adrenaline Rush skill. For this reason, it's better to wait before using Repair Party so you can fire more often, provided the combat situation allows for it. The Specialized Repair Team's consumable is different from Repair Party by its faster cooldown and the increased amount of HP it restores. It can be used by some British battleships and cruisers, destroyer Nuestra Shimi and cruisers Boys, Salem and Nueve de Julio. Smoke Generator can save you in the most extreme situations by creating a smoke screen around your ship, thus hiding you from your enemies. However, it doesn't mean that you're completely safe while under the cover of smoke. Detailed information on that can be found in How It Works Spotting System. If your ship moves while Smoke Generator is active, the smoke screen will expand when your ship leaves the set smoke screen by half of the hull's length but if your ship is moving too fast, it can temporarily lose its concealed status. To avoid this, travel at a quarter speed. 
However, the area of the smokescreen laid at this speed will be less than that of one you would otherwise create while travelling at full speed. Before heading into battle, analyse the composition of the enemy team. If there are many cruisers with radar or destroyers with hydroacoustic search, you should be very careful when capturing key areas. Don't activate smoke generator at the beginning of the battle as soon as you arrive at a key area because it's highly probable that an enemy destroyer will immediately launch torpedoes towards the smoke in response. Remember that while inside a smoke screen, your ship is blind and you won't be able to spot enemies for your allies. Don't activate smoke generator if you've been detected by radar or hydroacoustic search because a smoke screen won't hide you from these. You shouldn't stay stationary within smoke, it's better to constantly move. This will allow you to gain enough speed in time to evade any enemy torpedoes or salvos guided by your tracers. Be sure to keep an eye on the timer of your smoke generator. If it shows just several seconds remaining, it's time to get moving. It's important to generate smoke screens for your allies, especially for cruisers. However, while smoke screens will help battleships and cruisers with heavy calibers at long and medium ranges, it won't help at close ranges. They'll be spotted after firing a shot anyway. The operating and cooldown times of smoke generator, as well as the duration of the smoke screen deployed, depend on the nation, tier and type of ship. For example, smoke generators of US destroyers are active for longer and their smoke screens enjoy greater longevity, while British generators get exhausted very quickly. Consider the specific features of the smoke generator on your ship wisely. The special Smoke Generator Modification 1 upgrade increases the smoke screen setting time by 30%, but reduces its longevity by 5%. The smoke screen setting time can be increased with the X-Ray Papa Uni-1 signal, while the smoke screen expert commander skill will enlarge the area of effect. In addition to the standard smoke generator, the game also has exhaust smoke and crawling smoke generators. Italian cruisers come equipped with the former. It's different from the standard generator in that it can hide a ship even when she's setting a smoke screen at full speed, but the smoke dissipates rather quickly. Crawling smoke generator can be used by some Commonwealth and Pan-Asian ships. It works longer than the standard generator, but the smoke dissipates pretty quickly. Short burst smoke generators are also present in our game. These are used by UK destroyers and German Z-35. This consumable remains active for a short time and the smoke dissipates quickly, but the number of possible uses is significantly higher. One can detect ships hidden inside smoke screens or behind islands by using hydroacoustic search which increases the distance of guaranteed detection of ships and torpedoes. The radius of its effect depends on the nation, tier and type of the ship deploying it. Hydroacoustic search provides good means for fighting destroyers and pushing in a particular direction. It's useful when your ship is approaching a smokescreen, when your ship is behind a smokescreen, when a destroyer has been spotted on your flank or for detecting enemies hiding behind islands. Analyze the mini-map before using hydroacoustic search. If any enemy destroyers have been recently detected on the opposite flank, save the consumable. If they have been detected on your flank or their position is unknown, use it. The special hydroacoustic search modification 1 upgrade is extremely helpful because it increases duration of the consumable. It becomes especially noticeable for those ships that have this consumable with a long duration by default. The Sierra Bravo signal may also come in handy. Additionally, one can increase a ship's torpedo detection range by applying the Vigilance Commander skill. Radar works in exactly the same as hydroacoustic search, but with a couple of key differences. The effective time of radar is much shorter, but the radius of effect is significantly larger. While radar doesn't detect torpedoes, it does have another feature. Upon activating radar, you can immediately see all enemies within the consumables operating range. The detected ships will appear on the mini-map of your allies straight away, but your allies will spot those enemies only after six seconds, and only if the enemy ships stay within radar's area of effect for the entire time. It's highly useful to install the Surveillance Radar Modification 1 upgrade on a ship with radar. 
as this will increase its operating time by 20%. Allies and division mates should use hydroacoustic search and radar in turns, not simultaneously. Try to observe what consumables your allies are actively using around you. You can also detect enemies hiding behind islands by using spotting aircraft. But the primary function of this consumable is to temporarily increase the maximum firing range of a ship's primary armament by 20%. In addition to that, spotting aircraft allows you to observe a target at a more convenient angle that correlates to the flight path of your shells. That's why, while using spotting aircraft, if you can clearly see a target behind an island and there's no obstacle indicator in the reticle, it means that your shells can hit it. This consumable will also come in handy while firing at an enemy that's firing at you from behind a smokescreen. However, it won't help you detect torpedoes. It's important to understand that when using spotting aircraft or the gunfire control system modification 2 upgrade, you can fire shells over a range that surpasses the base firing range, which is why the dispersion of your shells increases. The aiming system's modification 1 upgrade will help reduce that dispersion. You can't control the spotting aircraft, but you can increase the time of its effect with the special spotting aircraft modification 1 upgrade. Soviet premium cruiser Lazor uses the rapid takeoff spotter consumable. It cools down much faster, but its operating time is less than that of the standard consumable. Another aircraft type you can use is Fighter, a consumable that improves your anti aircraft defenses. Fighters automatically attack any enemy aircraft that come within a three kilometer radius. The number of aircraft per squadron depends on the particular ship. The direction center for fighter skill adds one additional aircraft to a squadron. Avoid using this consumable too early. Choose a moment when enemy aircraft are close to the area of effect of your anti-aircraft defenses. Otherwise, the aircraft carrier player will be warned off and choose another target. Whilst that's not a bad result in itself, they will know when your Hawks are in cooldown and wait to deliver their attack in that moment. Don't launch your fighters close to enemy ships because the aircraft have little HP and you'll just lose them in vain. The most popular method of enhancing anti-aircraft defenses is the defensive AA fire consumable, which increases the damage of both direct AA hits and AA shell blast damage. The most effective moment to use this consumable is when enemy aircraft are inside the effective range of your AA defenses. That's why it's useful to turn on the AA range display on the minimap. You can increase its time of effect with the defensive AA fire modification 1 upgrade and reduce its cooldown time with the Sierra Bravo signal. Defensive AA fire often shares the same slot with hydroacoustic search. Consider all the advantages and disadvantages of each before making your choice between them. Engine boost temporarily increases the ship's maximum speed. Its characteristics depend on the nation, tier and type of the ship and the duration of its effect can be increased by installing the special Engine Boost Modification 1 upgrade. It's much harder to hit a ship with engine boost active, especially while she's performing maneuvers. That's why you shouldn't use it at the beginning of battle just to reach a flank more quickly. It's better to use this consumable when you need to quickly get out of sight or to increase your maneuverability while coming under fire. But remember that maneuvering reduces the speed of your ship. Engine boost becomes more valuable in the second half of battle. This is when you can use it to effectively and rapidly change flanks. European destroyer Smoland employs the emergency engine power consumable, which provides a greater increase in speed but has a shorter duration. The name of the main battery reload booster consumable says it all. You shouldn't use the 50% booster while firing from the maximum distance because you won't achieve an optimal number of hits. But if a target presents its sight to you at medium or short ranges, don't hesitate to use the booster to unleash hell on them. Another effective application of this consumable is when it's used after an enemy extinguishes any instances of fire on board. Simply switch to HE shells and you'll be able to inflict several more instances of fire on their ship in no time. 
Another important point is to use the main battery reload booster. Only when you're sure that the target won't move out of the spotting zone within the next 15 seconds. The primary way of using Torpedo Reload Booster is to activate it immediately after launching torpedoes. Thus, you'll be able to launch double the number of torpedoes in a very short time. If your torpedo tubes are still reloading and there are just a few moments left before you crash into the enemy, it's time to use the booster and surprise them with your torpedoes. All the different types of consumables have been designed to assist players in battle. We hope that our advice will help you use them more effectively. If you have your own unique tactics for implementing consumables in different in-game scenarios, be sure to share them with us in the comments. Until next time.